Hi, and welcome to my video on 10 tips and tricks to help you win in old school RuneScape. Number one, don't bury your bones. Prayer training in old school RuneScape has gotten significantly easier over the years. Burying the bones you collect is always an option, but I'm gonna explain a few different methods to train your prayer level that you may not have already known about. The Ectophuntus. The Ectophuntus is a temple located at the north of Port Phasmatis. It can be worshipped to grant four times more prayer experience than burying the bones. This method saves a lot of money, but it's more time consuming. In order to use the Ectophuntus for prayer training, it's strongly recommended to have completed the Ghost Ahoy quest. The Ectophile, which is one of its rewards, gives a direct teleport to the Ectophuntus and can dramatically decrease travel time taken to a bank. The Ectophuntus is used to refill the Ectophile after using it to teleport and can be refilled an infinite amount of times. Gilded Altars A Gilded Altar is the best altar that can be built in a player-owned house. It gives 250% prayer experience when a bone is used with it. With one incense burner lit, it gives 300% prayer experience per bone. When both are lit, it gives 350% prayer experience. When offering bones on the altar and both burners are lit, you receive a game message in the chat interface saying, the gods are very pleased with your offering. When both burners are not lit, it says only that the gods are pleased with your offering, omitting the word very. Any incense burners can be used to gain the same amount of experience, given they are lit with marital herbs. To build a gilded altar in the chapel room of the player on house, the player needs 75 construction, 2 marble blocks, 4 gold leaves, and 2 bolts of cloth. Chaos Temple. Members can offer bones on the Chaos Altar, granting 3.5 times prayer experience per bone, the same bonus as the Gilded Altar with two burners lit. The Elder Chaos Druid outside the temple can unknow to player's bones for 50 coins each. There's a 50% chance when offering a bone on this altar that it will not be consumed. These bones can be offered again, granting prayer experience and another 50% chance of not being consumed. On average, this will result in a 100% gain in experience, meaning players can achieve the same prayer experience with half the bones compared to a gilded altar with two burners lit. But be careful, you can get PK'd very easily doing this method. Ensold Heads Ensold Heads are items that can be dropped by their respective monsters. These heads can be reanimated by using the appropriate spell within the Arcadia spellbook on the head. Each reanimated monster killed will give the player favor within the Arcadia's house and prayer experience, with increasing favor and experience as the magic requirement to reanimate the monster increases. The reanimation spell must be cast on the head when it is on the ground. If you pick it up and cast the spell in your inventory, you will get the message stating to go to the Dark Altar to do that. Number 2. Training Combat with Slayer A Slayer Helmet is a piece of headgear made by combining various pieces of Slayer equipment. The helmet can be created by players with level 55 crafting, which boosts will work, and who have unlocked the Malevolent Masquerade ability for 400 Slayer reward points. It requires 10 defense to equip. Despite the helmet requiring a nose peg, which requires 60 Slayer to equip, the Slayer Helmet requires no particular Slayer level to wear. The Helmet has the same defense bonus as a Rune Full Helm. Additionally, while worn, the Helmet provides the special effects of all the Slayer equipment which it was made from. When worn on a Slayer assignment, the Helmet provides the melee boost of 16.67% against Slayer tasks. This does not stack with the boosts given by Salve Amulet or its enhanced imbued variants against undead slayer assignments. The helmet can be imbued through the Nightmare Zone to provide a boost to ranged and magic as well. Number 3. Shift-click dropping and tap dropping on RuneScape Mobile. 
A new feature that was added shortly after Old School RuneScape came back in 2013 was the ability to shift-click drop items. This feature has to be manually enabled via the options menu in-game. This allows you to hold your shift button and click any item in your inventory to drop it on the ground. This strongly benefits activities such as woodcutting or fishing, allowing you to drop your whole inventory of fish or logs in a matter of seconds. Much easier than having to right click every time. With the release of Old School RuneScape on mobile devices, Jagex had to make the game interface mobile friendly, and in doing so created the tap drop feature that can be turned on in your mobile options. Your inventory will be highlighted in red when this feature is enabled. This allows you to simply tap the items in your inventory, and they will immediately fall on the ground. Number 4. Withdraw a certain value from your bank in one click. RuneScape Mobile also came with a feature which allows you to withdraw a pre-established amount of an item in one click, making things like stringing bows very easy as you can withdraw 14 bows and 14 bowstrings in a matter of two clicks. Number 5. Clicking through your pets. If you've been lucky enough to obtain one of RuneScape's many pets, you might be having trouble with accidentally picking up your pet all the time. Lucky for us, Jagex made a feature in the Options menu under the Controls tab to be able to make the right-click options on your pet change their order, so your left click will no longer be Pick Up or Talk To. Number 6. Valuable Drop Notifications You may have noticed people in other videos and streams having red text in their chat whenever they get a good drop, but you never get that, because you have to enable it. It's really simple, just go to your options menu again, then go to chat, find the icon that has the light bulb, and click on that. First you choose the value of the notifications. I have mine to show anything that is higher than 30,000 GP will show as red text in my chat. Second, you want to make sure that you turn on untradable loot notifications. There are a lot of really important items in Old School RuneScape that are untradable. You may not see them on the ground right away, so it's good to always have this on. Boss kill count updates can just be set to unfiltered. Any boss that has a kill count will show your kills in the chat. And finally, drop item wardens. They're totally up to you. You can set a value of what an item would be worth if you were to try and drop it. You'd get a message in your chat box warning you that you're attempting to drop a valuable item. As you get more comfortable with the game, you'll know which items to drop and whatnot. So I have mine just set to off. Number 7. Vial Smashing Upon finishing a potion, the empty vial is left in the player's inventory. However, with completion of Alfred Grimhand's Bar Crawl, players may speak to the Barbarian Guard outside of the Barbarian Outpost to learn how to automatically smash vials upon finishing a potion. This can also be used in free-to-play. Number 8. Prayer Flicking and Tick Rates Prayer Flicking is an interesting concept. It can be difficult to get the hang of, but definitely worth learning. You turn on your prayer and double click every 0.6 of a second to effectively turn off and on your prayer every game tick, allowing you to not consume any prayer points. You'll know your prayer flicking correctly if you always have the prayer indicator above your head. A game tick is how long any specific action will take to complete. For example, an Abyssal Whip will attack every 4 game ticks, which is 2.4 seconds, and a God Sword will attack every 6 game ticks, which is 3.6 seconds. Prayer flicking is commonly used for overhead prayers, but it can also be used for multiple different ones by setting up quick prayers on your orb beside your minimap. Using Quick Prayers is allowing me to protect from melee and use Piety for extra melee bonuses at the same time, while also preserving prayer by prayer flicking. Game Tick Manipulation isn't only used for prayer flicking. Players have found ways to utilize tick rates with things such as fishing or woodcutting, allowing you to reach maximum XP per hour for certain methods. Number 9 Clothing Perks 
Clothing perks are very useful in Old School RuneScape. Every skill has its own unique perk. Perks such as the Magic Cape allowing you to change your spellbook up to 5 times per day with the cape in your inventory, or the Farming Cape giving you unlimited teleports to the Farming Guild, along with a plus 5% yield bonus when harvesting crops. High level players will often seek out 99 crafting at an early stage in their account due to the skill cape perk being the closest teleport to a bank, which is located within the crafting guild. Achievement diary gear is some of the most useful gear, like the Ardoin cloak, giving you free teleports to the Ardoin farm and unlimited teleports to the monastery, along with a best in slot cape until you can achieve a fire cape. Varrock diaries offer you daily discounted battle staffs from Zaf's staff shop allowing you to make consistent money every day. Skilling outfits can be obtained for various different skills, such as the graceful outfit obtained through doing rooftop agility. It will restore your run energy 30% faster, but only while wearing the full set. The Pyromancer's outfit will give you a total of 2.5% extra fire making XP when the full set is worn, and each piece can be worn individually for their own bonus. Wearing the full set gives a set bonus of 0.5%, making having the full set worth getting instead of just a few pieces. And finally, number 10, third-party game clients. There are really only two main third-party game clients that people use, RuneLite and OSBuddy. RuneLite being the most popular of the two. Each have their own perks, but OSBuddy, along with its free client, carries a pro package with a monthly cost, and RuneLite is 100% free. I personally use RuneLite due to it having everything OS Buddy Pro has, and then some. Most notably, animation smoothing and GPU rendering. Third-party clients also offer things such as showing text on the ground for valuable items, showing agility markers for rooftop agility courses and agility shortcuts, and even certain PVM plugins that help you have accurate kills. If you've made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, please leave a like and feel free to subscribe for more videos. Bonus! Utilize the Old School RuneScape Wiki. Anything you need to know about Old School RuneScape can be found by simply Google searching that thing followed by Old School RuneScape. The official Old School RuneScape Wiki can be found at oldschool.runescape.wiki. All the information in this video can be found at various wiki links that I'll put down in the description below. Thank you for watching, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.